Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two biggest giants of the cryptocurrency world. Bitcoin was the first coin and Ethereum followed a few years later. So hello all here I am Atul from Edureka and today we are here to compare these two popular platforms. So without delaying any further let's discuss the agenda of today's session. So here what we are going to learn today. I'll be comparing the Bitcoin and Ethereum based on these six parameters starting with cryptocurrency then accounts then we'll see how both the coins differ on the basis of their smart contracts. Following it will be the transaction. The fifth will be the consensus and finally we'll see how both the coins differ on the basis of mining. All right, so let's start now when everyone has access to global market great idea flourish. That's the ideology of both these platform which is why both are open source digital currencies. Now what makes Ethereum and Bitcoin similar just like Bitcoins Ethereum also has a digital currency which is named as Ether and both these valuable cryptocurrencies uses the proof of work mining. All right. Now even though both are blockchain implementation they serve different purpose and that is why there are stark obvious difference between the two of them. All right before we undertake an analysis of these two cryptocurrencies and platform let me give you a quick introduction of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So let's talk about Bitcoins first. So what is Bitcoin Bitcoin can be quickly described as a digital money. It is a decentralized global currency issued by a code stored across the globe. The quick introduction for Bitcoin regarding the coding aspect is that everyone can download a computer program which stores all transaction in a chain of blocks called blockchain obviously and through which it can validate that you are the owner of the Bitcoin while ensuring that you can spend it only once. All right fine moving on ahead. So what is Ethereum Ethereum is a world computer for developing decentralized application just like Bitcoins all the parameters applies for Ethereum too. But on top of that Ethereum also has a smart contract making the currency aspect as just one application because Ethereum can run programs like any ordinary computer at a global scale right. So just like Bitcoin it has a software which you can download the software does all the usual verification regarding Ethereum but on top of it it also verifies the code wherever applicable fine. So to churn it down Ethereum can be defined as a decentralized platform for programming a digital money. OK so this was a brief introduction of Ethereum and Bitcoin. So let's start with our first comparison. So the first parameter being the cryptocurrency. Now if you compare the coins based on purpose they were developed you will see that Bitcoins was created after the 2008 financial crisis with a vision to remove the dependencies on third parties to facilitate the transaction and hence disintermediation. Ethereum on the other hand serves two main purposes. Firstly it is a cryptocurrency that is used to run the state machine of Ethereum. So you see Ether is a fuel that is used to pay for every single computational step. The invention of Ethereum makes it expensive to use up to too much of blockchain computers capacity. Ether is the fuel you need to run smart contracts. If considering an analogy if Bitcoin was a digital gold then Ether is a digital oil fine. Secondly apart from that Ether is also traded on exchange just like any other cryptocurrencies out there in the market fine. So next we'll compare the two based on the accounts. So let's see in the case of Bitcoin what we do in the case of accounts. Bitcoins does not have a distinct account but it maintains the ledger of unspent transaction output or simply said it maintains the state of where the coins are flowing. On the other hand Ethereum maintains proper accounts accounts play a central role in Ethereum. There are basically two types of accounts in Ethereum first being the externally owned account the EOAs and the second being the contract accounts accounts have balance and contracts have both balance and contract storage. The state of all account is the state of the Ethereum network which is updated with every block and which the network really needs to reach a consensus about accounts are essential for users to interact with Ethereum blockchain via transactions accounts represent identities of external agents example human personas mining nodes and automated agents accounts use public key cryptography to sign transactions so that the EVM can securely validate the identity of the transaction sender externally owned account maintain the state of the balance and has ether balance can send transaction and is controlled by private keys. Fine. Next is the contract account. It maintains the state of balance and storage. It also has ether and the associated code. The code execution is triggered by transactions or messages received from other contracts. Now since we are at the smart contract let's differentiate the two coins on the basis of smart contract functionality. So a third parameter of comparison is smart contract. While Bitcoin has a built in scripting language it's very limited in functionality and with only a few dozen operations. Now Ethereum has a full general purpose language integrated in it known in computer speak as Turing complete programs written in this language are known as smart contracts. Now you would ask what is smart contract. 
Now these smart contracts are pre-written logic stored and replicated on a blockchain which is executed by a network of computer and can result in blockchain updates. So guys you can see that Ethereum takes a distinctive lead when it comes to programming on a platform. It has the potential to help notoriously difficult industries. So imagine the case of investment where your selling and buying of stock is done for you by the code itself. Also in the case of insurance where you can automatically trigger the claim whenever the event occurs. Another important application of smart contract could be in the supply chain management and even the fundraising part. Yeah, the fundraising could be made easier with smart contracts rather than being limited to a specific set of transaction types user will be able to use Ethereum as a sort of Lego of crypto finance. That is to say one will be able to implement any feature that one desires simply by coding it in Ethereum's language. That is why people believe that Ethereum is potentially more lucrative than bitcoins. Fine. Now let's move ahead and compare Bitcoin and Ethereum on the basis of transaction as a key attribute. So transaction throughput in Bitcoin is close to around three transactions per second, which is almost five times lesser than in Ethereum. So Ethereum takes a huge lead in case of transaction processing speed. Let's have a closer look at the calculations here. Talking about the Bitcoins first, the maximum block size by average transaction size will give you the average transaction per block, which is close to around 2000 transactions per block. Unlike in Bitcoin, there is no fixed megabyte limit for the size of the block. In Ethereum, a block size is limited by a total gas consumption limit. For instance, in April 2016, the total gas limit amounted to around 4712388 gas, which can be spent on every block. So the average transaction per block can be calculated as average gas limit defined for a block divided by average gas for a transaction, which is 225 transaction per block approximately. Now, don't you think that's way too much of a difference because both of these platforms follows almost the same technology. If you noticed, I said that technology is just similar. Where it differs is the way they have implemented consensus algorithm. Fine. Talking about consensus, you see the Bitcoin's proof of work algorithm has some limitation. The network is vast and growing and hence a transaction takes considerable amount of time to propagate in a network which causes the ambiguity in the network of Bitcoin. Also another limitation of Bitcoin is that since the miners are the stakeholders of the network the top mining pools control the 75 percent of all the mining activity which causes the centralization in the system. Now to tackle this problem Ethereum has adopted the ghost protocol that brings some efficiency gains to the proof of work. Now Ghost solves the first issue of network security loss by including stale blocks in the calculation of which is the longest chain. That is to say not just the parent and further ancestor of the block but also the stale descendants of the blocks ancestor. In Ethereum jargon uncles are added to the calculation of which block has the largest total proof of work backing it. To solve the second issue of centralization Ethereum implements a simplified version of Ghost which only goes down one level. Specifically a stale block can only be included as an uncle by the direct child of one of its direct siblings or not by any block with a more distant relation. So Ethereum's modified proof of work implementation does adds to the efficiency of Ethereum's network. Positively Ghost protocol also alters the process of mining in Ethereum. Let's see how mining differs in Bitcoin and Ethereum. The mining in Bitcoin has evolved a lot. In beginning the CPUs were used for mining of Bitcoin. But as the computational power of the network increased the GPUs took over the CPUs and eventually now the ASIC miners are used to mine the bitcoins. While in case of Ethereum the Ethereum is ASIC resistant. ASIC should not have any benefit at all because it's just general computation and to top it off contracts can be released that are specifically ASIC hard. So there would be an active disincentive to using ASICs. Another interesting thing that doesn't seem pointed out in the white paper is that the memory must be fast excessively fast. So standard DRAM isn't up to the challenge. That is why the RAM on GPUs take the burnt of the work and most mining today. Ethereum is an advancement based on the principle of blockchain that supports Bitcoin but with a purpose that do not compete with Bitcoin. So which one do you think is better? Is it Ethereum or Bitcoin? Well that's for you to decide and also it depends on how you're using it or what is the purpose of your use. All right now if you ask a developer's opinion now I'd say that Ethereum has its obvious advantage. So both Bitcoin and Ethereum are different version of using the blockchain technology and are set to establish themselves driven by different intentions. Now just like Bitcoin Ethereum Ripple there are many new impactful cryptocurrencies and tokens which are arriving in the market every day. So learn the basic of cryptocurrency how we got here and what the future of crypto hold for us in Edureka's Ethereum developer certification training.
Well, this training will give you the foundation knowledge about blockchain and Ethereum. The comprehensive learning path will help you to become a skilled Ethereum developer. So why you should go for Edureka? Well, Edureka will provide you live instructor led online training with a 24 7 support team that is there to guide you through the technical and non technical issues that are related to the course. Now, once you enroll to the batch, you'll be provided with a lifetime access to Edureka's carefully crafted learning management system. The learning management system will contain your class recording, presentations, PDF, and information regarding your project. At Edureka, once you enroll for a course, you can even reassign your batch at your convenience. If you're not satisfied with a single go through of the course, you can even sign up for the future batches n number of times. Classes that you miss are recorded and uploaded to your LMS just to make sure you really never miss any class. So thank you folks. This was all for the session. In case you have any doubts, add your query to the comment section. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!